Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to use the Smoke Photoshop action. So I'll work through three different examples in this video just so you get really familiar um, with how to edit the layers and come up with a really good workflow. Uh, so basically we're going to be using this photo first and going to be recreating this. Well the action will recreate this for us. Uh, so you can see that yeah, it emits a lot of smoke from our subject and it creates um, two different light sources which you can see here, one coming from here. Um, down this way and the other one from this bottom corner up this way uh, and basically the smoke will only really appear in uh, the area of the lights so and you can rotate the lights you can adjust their brightness uh, so that's a pretty cool touch so I'll uh, just click through some some examples I have uh, created of the effect and you can change the colors easily I'll show you how to do all that this one here is the second example I'll work through. Okay, so we'll be recreating that. Okay, that's it. So I'll just close this down and let's get into it. So if you've used my actions before, you'll be familiar with how to set up your Photoshop files. So you can just skip ahead uh, if you want. But for those who haven't used any of my actions before, I'll show you all the things that need to be set up correctly before playing the action, just to ensure you don't get any errors. So uh, firstly, look into your uh, layer panel. And when you've opened up your photo, it should look identical to this. It should say background and have that lock symbol. Okay, 99% of the time when you open a photo, it will look like that. So for those who have opened up a photo and it doesn't look like that, this is what you need to do. So let's just pretend I've opened up this photo and it's called layer one. So what you need to do is go to layer, new, background from layer. And that just sets it correctly as the background. Uh, next, still in the layer panel, go to the top right hand corner icon here. Click on that. It's chopped off on my monitor, but um, scroll down and click on panel options. Okay, and right down the bottom here, make sure add copy to copy layers and groups is ticked. Click OK. Next, go to image mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel. All right. And lastly, and as always with any photo effect action, make sure you're working with high resolution photos. You can see mine's 2300 by 3700. Uh, I found the best results come from this action when using photos in the range of say 1500 pixels up to about 4000 pixels. So um, avoid using images you know, under 1000 pixels uh, because you lose a lot of detail okay, in the effects. Okay, so I'll close that down. Okay, so what we need to do now is um, create a selection around my subject. Okay. So I'm just going to hit W to get my wand tool out, or go over here, grab the magic wand tool. And because my subjects are fairly contrasted against the white background, I should be able to just click anywhere on the open here. And what it's done, it's created a selection around my subject. Now I need to hold down um, Shift to add to the selection because it hasn't picked up uh, these white areas tucked in here and down here. Uh, that'll do. So after you've created a selection, uh, what you need to do is create a new layer. So go to layer, new layer, and this must be called brush, all in lowercase, B-R-U-S-H. If you have an uppercase letter or it's not spelled like that, the action won't work at all. You'll get an error. So click OK. And what I need to do now is basically fill in this selection. Now if I go to fill my selection now, um, if I hold down, if you hold down Alt Delete or Option Delete, it'll fill a selection with your foreground color here, which is black. So if I do that, you'll notice that it's filled everywhere bar my subject. So what I need to do is invert my selection, control, control shift I or command shift I, invert it. Now I'll hit alt delete or option delete, fill that again. And there we go. Has done a perfect job, but it's good enough for this action. Uh, I don't want this little bit of shadow down here, so I'm just gonna zoom in 
going to hit E, get my razor out, and I'm just going to um, start erasing around here. Okay, that'll do. Okay, and it doesn't matter what colour you fill your subject, any colour will do. So you've got your layer core brush, you've filled your subject. So what we need to do now is load up the brushes that were included in the download. It's a very important step. Action won't work if you don't load up the brushes. So hit B anywhere over your canvas. That'll activate the brush tool. Right click, okay, it'll bring up your brushes. And what we need to do here is either replace these brushes that are in your brush panel or add to them. So what you do is click on this uh, icon here, go to load brushes, and select the smoke brushes.abr file that was included in the download. Okay, uh, you can see the brushes have uh, been added down the bottom here, but to clean this up, I'm just gonna go to replace brushes. Just gonna do that again, and you can see it's replaced all my brushes with the smoke brushes. Okay. So that's all good. Uh, what we need to do now is light up the actions panel, window actions. It'll pop up on the side here. Now to load them, you go to this top right hand corner icon and go to uh, load actions. Select smoke.atn and there it is there. Okay. Now everything is actually ready to go. Uh, a good thing to do always before running an action is to go to edit purge all. That will just wipe out um, any history uh, banked up in your Photoshop because sometimes it can cause an error but it's rare but it can happen and also hit B and make sure that your brush opacity is set to 100% before playing the action okay so all set to go now you select the smoke um, action here and we click play now as soon as I click play it's going to come up with a window and it says uh, in the next step, start brushing where you want the smoke to fade off from your subject. A suitable brush is already selected, so all you need to do is start brushing. When you're finished, simply click play, uh, click the play button in the actions panel to resume the action playback. If you need help with a step, just come back to this video tutorial. Uh, click stop below to proceed. So all you need to do here is click stop. Okay, and you can see the action has stopped here. But what we need to do is start brushing over our photo uh, where we want the smoke to fade away off our subject. So basically all that means is that um, this upper part of my subject is the area that I want to have the most amount of detail. I want to be my focal point. And as we go down here, as it enters this red area, um, the smoke's gonna kind of fade away a lot, okay? so. Yeah, all you need to do is start brushing. Um, I've already selected a brush for you. Red will already be selected, so just start brushing away. And when you're done, okay, all you need to do is click play in the actions panel, and that will resume the action playback. And just make sure um, when you're brushing, like I said, that your brush opacity is at 100%. All right, so the action's now gonna run through to the end. It's gonna take about a minute to a minute and a half, so I'm just going to skip the video ahead and get to the result. Alright, so the action's finished playing back and you can see uh, the result that it's created. Okay, so I'm just going to collapse the actions panel and we'll go into the layer panel now. Now, with all my actions, the very first thing you always want to do is collapse all the folders that are open. Uh, I wish there was a way for me to record this step, but it doesn't look like it's possible with actions, so we have to do this manually. So the smoke folder will already be selected, and what you need to do is hold down Control Alt or Command Option on the Mac, and just click on this arrow here next to the folder icon. Click on that, and everything just collapses. All right. So uh, if you want to run the action again, okay, I've left the brush layer on at the top here. So you just need to shift select the adjustments and the smoke folders, delete them, and click play in the action, and you're ready to go again. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do first is just go down through every layer here and talk to you about what they do, okay? And when I've done that, um, I'm just going to modify the look of uh, this design, create something uh, a bit customized, and yeah, then I'm going to open up two more examples and we're going to work through them. Okay, so let's go. So this first one here, overall sharpening, 
uh, and braid its opacity. Basically, I've got that turned off, but if you turn it on, it will just add a, a little bit of overall sharpening to your subject. Okay, uh, but I recommend sharpening um, after you've you know moved layers around and stuff like that. So it's probably best to keep that off, but it's there if you want it. Lighting correction, you really don't need to uh, play over this. Basically, it just balances out um, the blends between these light sources and the background a bit, so don't worry about that. This layer here, overall contrast, in brackets opacity, whenever I've got a layer um, that's got, uh, in brackets, opacity, I'm basically telling you to experiment with that layer through its opacity. So you can see at the top here, it's at 40%. And if I just click on this word opacity, click, hold, and drag to the left and right, that's going to adjust the opacity. So I'm just, I'm just flicking from 0 to 100%. So it was on 40. Um, if you want to add a bit more contrast, you just increase that. You can see that working. Or if you want to flatten it out a lot more, just go the opposite direction by default to 40. Now, if you uh, want to remove all the color and just want to have a black and white design, click on black and white, okay? And yeah, it's all black and white. If you want to add some of the original photo color to your design, turn this on. And you can see what that does, it adds in the color and sort of spreads it out a bit as well, just for effect. If you go inside here, uh, we've got three different layers. I'll just turn them all off. You've got color bleed narrow. So that just pretty much fills in um, the exact area of your subject. Color bleed wide. The color starts to spread out a little bit more. And you've got extra wide and they spread wide out. Okay, so, yep, that's off by default. Use single color overtone. If you turn this on, it will basically add uh, a color over your entire design. You can just double click on this box and play around uh, with these colors here. Okay. Mess around with that. Uh, now these six folders here, <coughs> excuse me, I've got color option one to six. By default, one is turned on. If you turn it off, everything's black and white. But if you go down the line here, I've just set up some default um, color options. Okay, so you can click them on, play around with those colors. You can blend multiple together. So I could have number six on, I could turn on number four. And what I like to do is just adjust the opacity of those folders. So I could bring that down to 40%, bring this one down a bit more. So you kind of blend between those two. I'll just turn them up. And if, you're not, if you want to experiment with the layers inside, just go inside there and play around with those settings. Okay, so let's move down into the smoke folder. Now, whenever the actions finish playing back, the very first layer I always go to is this one here. It's called Reveal Normal Photo, and in brackets, Brush Mask. So basically I'm telling you to select this mask, and start brushing either black or white. Now what this layer does, if I hide this mask, if I hold then shift and click on that mask, it's gonna hide it. And all that is, is that I've put a cutout of your subject on top of all the effects, okay? Now, the way you use this mask is that if I just select it, if I hit B, um, I'll just get my soft brush here. And if I brush white into this mask, it's gonna reveal this subject, if I brush black, it's going to hide it. So by default, if I just go inside this mask, you hold down Alt or Option and click on it, you can see I've applied um, like a cloudy texture which sort of blends between um, greys to black, so it shows a little bit of visibility. If I turn this layer on and off, you can see it just adds a little bit of, um, of our subject's visibility. But for this photo, I want his face to be much more prominent. I want the face to be the focal point here. So I'm just going to select the mask. I'm going to go grab a white brush because I want to reveal this layer. Now I'm just going to, um, to change the size of your brush, use the left and right square brackets. So I'm just going to brush over his face, one click. Okay. And that has just revealed his face. Now it's a bit too strong. I prefer that his face kind of blends a bit more with the smoke and stuff. So what I'm going to do is just click on opacity. I'm going to start dragging that down. So it's 
going to drag this down and it's going to start revealing some of the smoke on top of his face. So, so if I now turn this layer on and off, so there's before and there's after. So it just that's the very first layer you want to do. Uh, you want to go to is to go into the mask, identify the focal points in your design, and brush white, and then adjust the opacity to create a blend um, between your subject and the smoke. This layer here, inverter. I'll come back to that one. Um, basically, if you flick it on, it inverts all the colors, so you have black smoke on a white background. Um, but I'll come back to around that one a bit more because there's a few layers I'll have to adjust when I've turned that on. Brightness controller. If you double click on this, or actually if I turn this light on and off, you'll see what's happening. So if I turn it off, um, everything's a bit too bright. Um, but if you turn it on, it really focuses, um, it really helps sort of put a lot of focus on the detail, on all the smoke. Um, just creates a really nice uh, really nice look. So if you double click on this, you can play around with the settings here. Don't worry about offset. Play around with exposure and gamma correction. You know, drag these to the left and right. And you can see that it's really, um, it heavily affects the, the brightness and everything. So I think this one was looking pretty good as is, but I'll play around with the gamma correction. Something like that, that's good. So that one's there to play around with. Uh, overall noise, you don't really need to play around with this one. Uh, basically it just adds a little bit of noise for atmospheric effect. Uh, yeah, so this layer here, vignette, if you turn that one on, it just adds a, I'll turn it back on and off, just adds a soft, dark um, border around your canvas. So that just helps sort of place a bit more emphasis on the center of the canvas, which should be the subject. Highlight, I'll zoom back in. Highlight glows, again, it breaks opacity. If I turn it on and off, basically what that does, it looks for highlights in your subject and it applies a soft glow, okay? If it's too strong, either turn the layer off or again, just play around with the opacity. But I think this is looking pretty good. Soft background smoke you really don't need to play around with. If I turn this on and off, okay, all that's doing is placing, is creating some smoky textures that uh, faintly sit in the background there, okay. Um, dust, if I turn that on and off, uh, might be hard for you to see, but wherever the light appears, it adds little dust particles. If I just hit Control or Command J, I duplicate this over and over, you'll see them start to appear. So you can see them there now, okay? Uh, I mean, you can add, that you can create that effect easily just by duplicating the layer. Um, and something that you might want to do is, uh, if I just right click on this mask and go apply lay mask, I can add a little bit of blur. Actually, what I'll do, I'll change the blend mode to add. Turn up the opacity, okay? I'm just going to add a little bit of blur. And I'm just going to turn that opacity down a bit. So what it does, it just adds a little bit of a glow from those dust particles. So that's um, a technique you can use. So um, and I'm just going to delete that and just keep it as is. Photo detail visibility, brackets opacity. I'll turn this on and off. So what this does, if um, when you've played, when the action's finished playing back and it's created smoke everywhere, Sometimes it can create a cluster of smoke in an area um, where it sort of can blow out a bit of the detail in your subject. And what this layer does, it brings forward that subject, uh, that detail from your photo and sort of overrides the smoke. So you can see that there, if I turn it on and off, it sort of brings out, um, you can see around the torso here as I turn it on and off. You can see how it's all a bit hidden with the layer off and then I turn it on and it sort of just brings it forward a bit. And what I like to do with this layer is I flick it off you know, and I take a look around the design and think what areas look better with it off. So I'll flick it on and off, looking around. So maybe I'll slip the mask, okay? So I want to hide this layer, okay? So I'll grab a black brush, because I want to hide it, hit B. Um, so I'll turn it on and off. And I'm just going to start brushing over these numbers here to hide it. Again, turn it on and off. 
Maybe up here. Something like that. That's looking pretty good. So, main smoke. If I turn this folder off, you can see that that's the area. Um, so, you remember at the start of the action where it stopped and I got you to brush um, over the area where you want the smoke to fade off? So, basically, that area that you, you brushed for the smoke to fade off, that's in this folder here called Faded Off Smoke. So, if I turn that off, you'll see that now no smoke has been applied down here, okay? It's only gonna be applied up here in the main smoke, so I'll turn that one off, okay? Um, and that's another look there. If you want to not use any smoke at all, that creates a pretty cool effect as is. So, there's just a little tip there. Um, so let's go back to main smoke. And what I like to do um, when the action's finished, I'll jump into this fold here, so you can see the seven smoke layers, and that creates all the smoke effects. But what I like to do is place them manually where I want to. The action randomly places these smoke elements um, around your subject, but you're much better off to jump into this folder and place them where you want. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I like to do is I turn all the layers off, and I'll turn them on one by one. So I'll start from smoke seven, I'll turn that one on, and um, I'm just gonna turn auto select off. Smoke seven actually looks pretty good where it is, so I'm just gonna leave that. Smoke six. Um, that's looking pretty good. And also, when you're um, playing around with these smoke layers, just check the opacity because some of these, the opacity is down. So smoke six, the opacity is 40%. So if I turn it up to 100%, you see how much stronger that is now. Um, but again, what I like to do here is, I thought that looked a little bit better, a bit stronger. And I really like this area here around his back. I like that area, but not so much over here. And it's a bit too crowded up the top here. So what I'm gonna do is select my mask and I'm gonna hit Control or Command I to invert it. So that's gonna hide the layer, hidden everything. So I'm gonna hit B, I'm gonna grab my white brush because now I wanna reveal it. I'm only gonna brush over now the areas where I thought it looked cool. So it was like around there. And it's a bit clustered up here. So I'm just gonna brush just a little bit, just for a little bit of texture. And that's it. So if I turn that layer on and off, you see it now. It's a bit too bright, so I'm just gonna lower the opacity. And I'm just gonna brush away, oops, like the mask. Maybe that's okay. To flip between uh, black and white, okay, you just hit X on the keyboard. So that's great when you like when you've selected your mask and you're you're going between brushing elements on and off. Just hit X on the keyboard, and that's a quick way to um, flip between black and white. Let's keep going. Smoke five. I'll turn that one on. I'm going to move that one around, and all I'm doing is just moving around my subject and thinking, you know, where does it look awesome? So I'm just going to I'm going to rotate this. Control T or Command T, and I'm just going to line that up pretty much with his back, something like that. Now what I also like to do is duplicate smoke layers to create more smoke. So if I just hit Control J or Command J, I've just duplicated that. Now I can move it around. But when you've duplicated a smoke layer, it's important to, uh, what I always like to do is flip it horizontal, just so that it doesn't look like a complete duplicate. So I'll go Edit, Transform, Flip, uh, Flip Horizontal down the bottom here. Okay, and I'm just gonna move this over onto his arm. Like that, I'm just gonna hit Control T, I'm gonna scale that down. I'm just gonna rotate this a bit more. Something like that. It's looking pretty good. And what I also like to do, if you look at that, this side and this side, you can still kind of tell it's a duplicate, so I'm gonna select my mask. I'm going to brush black to remove it. I'm just going to brush away a little bit of the detail. Okay. And I'm going to duplicate it again to make it a bit more visible. I'm just going to shift select them and move them around. That looks pretty cool down there, actually. So I'm going to leave it there. Okay. Smoke four. Uh, 
Maybe it's a little bit coming from his back. I'm just going to brush away that area. I'm just going to lower the opacity down a bit. That'll do. Actually, what I might do is um, I might duplicate it, Control J. And I don't mind that sort of up here in the light. I'm just going to, so you can see if I move this layer around, see how the smoke disappears when we go into black. When I move it into the light, it reappears. I'm just going to scale that up. I'm just going to rotate it. Now I'm just going to lower the opacity down. So it's just added a little bit of smoke up the top there. That's cool. Okay, smoke three. And you don't have to use all these smoke layers. I just like to add them all. Um, this one... I'm just going to flip this vertical, vertically. I'm going to flip it horizontal. So I'm just using the shortcuts there, but um, yeah, if you want to flip layers, edit, transform, and you can flip them all in here. So this is actually the part I like the best, is just filling around with the position of these layers. It's because we're, it's at the point where you can get really creative and um, really make the design look awesome. I'm just going to select the mask and brush away this bit here. So I'm only keeping this little bit of detail. That. Okay, um, smoke two. Where did that appear? Up the top here. I'm going to turn up this opacity. Um, looks pretty cool around there. It's a bit congested in this area. I'm just going to raise that. Looking good. And smoke one. That one hasn't come out too visible. The opacity um, of these smoke elements are randomized every time you play the action. So some will appear uh, a bit more faded out, but if you want to boost their visibility, either check the opacity setting or just control or command J to duplicate it. Um, but I'll just leave that. I'll just leave that one there. Okay, so that is looking pretty cool. Um, it's going to turn off this layer again to see. I might turn it off. I don't think I really need it in this case. I think it's all looking pretty good. Now, Faded off smoke, so that's the area that we brushed on at the start of the action when it started playing, it was down this area. So you can see the look of this smoke is much different to what's going on at the top here. So this area at the top is my real, that's my focal point, that's where, where I want people to look at. And down here, it kind of fades away. Now there's a few settings here. If you want to lower the opacity of all this, just lower the folder opacity, just drag that down. So you can see it's starting to fade. Uh, but if we go inside this folder, got three layers so I'll turn these all off and start from the bottom so faded off smoke is pretty much just the texture and that texture will be constricted to roughly the area um, of your the area that we brushed at the start of the action okay so you can kind of see it being out, outlined there um, blurred smoke if you turn that one on that just adds a little bit of atmosphere I guess uh, and now reveal photo edges if I turn that one on what that will do, it um, it starts to reveal the outlines of some of the details in this lower half of your subject. Okay, so if I just turn this opacity, it's at 20. If I crank that up to 100, it's a bit overkill, but you can see what's happening. You can see the outlines have now appeared really strong, uh, and these outlines will only appear in the area. Uh, sorry, will only appear wherever the faded off smoke appears. Okay. Now, so you want to just play around with the opacity of this layer. So I always start at zero, you know, I just turn it up a little bit. And I like to get to a point where you can sort of just make out the outlines of your subject. So I can see his feet, um, see his knees, so that's all looking pretty cool. And again, um, you can control the visibility of all these elements with the masks. Okay? Just keep going. Uh, glowing photo outlines. Now this is one you definitely want to play around with. Uh, if you turn it off, Okay, it removes all the glowing outlines. You see that there? Now, some photos, um, or some results, you'll turn that off and you're like, hey, that looks way better. Others, you'll want to play around with it. You want to keep it on. Um, I always like to 
turn it on and off and again ask yourself the question where um, does the design look better with it off okay so I'm looking around there as I turn it off and I think this all looks pretty good um, so I'm just going to keep it on everywhere but again you can just select this mask grab a black brush to hide it and say say if I didn't want his baseball bat all um, glowing I'll just start brushing there and it's gone so when I've played the action I start off with that one reveal normal photo brush mask then I jump down to these two and I just flick them on and off um, you know and see what looks good and then control the visibility of those layers through the mask okay next one down is a really important one and one you definitely want to play around with it's called the directional lights now if I turn off everything goes dark okay you can still make out some of the smoke all right um, but this is what controls a lot of the smoke visibility so if we go inside here we have a few layers but these two ones here in yellow are the directional lights we've got directional light one and two so directional light one is the thinner light that appears up the top here it shoots down that way and the other one appears from down the bottom here and goes up that way now if you double click on these layers okay it's a gradient fill layer and what you want to experiment with is the angle if I change this angle the whole light source shifts and you can see it's now um, lit up all the smoke in this area so if I just click around just changing the direction you can see you can see that there um, if you want so you can see that this light source is quite narrow you adjust the width of that uh, light source through the scale so you select um, this down icon here and you adjust the scale okay, you can make it really thin not that thin but really narrow light sources like that um, 50 was the default so I'll just keep it at that okay and if you want to lower the opacity simply just um, lower the opacity of the layer okay by default it's at 30% Sometimes it can shoot light into your subject and sort of brighten up, um, you know, areas of your subject too much. And so to combat that, you just lower the opacity down. So you can see it's starting to flatten out some of those highlights. Um, but I'm just going to actually like it at the default angle. It's probably it's best to. Um, probably play around with the directional lights first get them into the position you like and then go into the smoke folder and construct you know move them into the position um, do it in that order I think is a bit better uh, and you got the color of the lights here so you can just double click on this box and you know you can have a red light change the color here okay um, and another little tip if I just zoom out here um, I'll, this is something I experiment, experimented with the other day. If I turn the brightness control off, you can see it brightens up everything. Okay, so if I turn it back on, it's normal. So what I do, I want to hide some of this layer. So where wherever I hide this layer, it's going to brighten up areas. So what I do is select the mask. I'm going to grab a black brush. I'm going to just scale up my brush. And if I just if I brush into this lower corner here. You can see it sort of brightens up this area down here. I brush up here. So it kind of looks like there's a strong light source, a stronger light source coming from down the bottom here and up top. So it's just a really subtle detail. Um, but, you know, I think it just adds a little bit. Alright. Um, soft photo glows opacity. This is just another set of glows. Okay. Um, you can see it does brighten up your subject quite a bit. And if you've run the action and again it's too bright, jump to this folder here, turn it off. If that solves the problem, um, leave it off. Or you can control it through the opacity. Maybe it's just you know needs just a little less. Um, but I'll keep it quite bright. Um, and lastly, is the background color. You don't really need to play around this, but if you want to um, experiment with some different background colors, just um, do that. So I'm just going to mess around with this design a little bit now. I'm going to check out these other colors again. That one's pretty cool.
I actually don't mind the blue that we start off with. Um, so I might keep that. I'm just going to check out this contrast again. What I might do, I'll go back into my smoke folder. Um, and I'm just going to duplicate some of these layers to see if it looks better um, being a bit brighter. Duplicate that one. I'll duplicate that, but I'm just going to lower the opacity down just a little bit. This one here, I'm just going to lower the opacity down a bit more. And I'm just going to lower the opacity of the faded off area down just a bit. Okay, so you can see the key to adjusting these designs is really just fiddling around with the layers. Uh, but I'll go through two more examples just so it's really um, drilled in on how, you know, the best way to adjust these designs. So um, let's check out the before and after. I'll turn these off. So there's our original photo and just with some couple of minutes work, created that. Okay, let me get the next um, example set up. Okay, so I've got to open the next example now, and I have created my brush layer, and I've drawn uh, a pretty rough outline around my subject. Okay, so action's all ready to go. I'm just going to click play, and we're at the point where we need a brush on where we want the smoke to fade away. So I just want the smoke to fade off from um, around the back of his head here and down in this area here. Okay, so I want the main smoke to uh, be created around this area and everything else to be faded off using that other other um, style of smoke. So I click play and the action will go to the finish now so I'll jump to the result. Alright, the action's finished playing and that's what it's created. Now I'll, cro I'll uh, collapse the actions panel and I'm going to go straight into uh, editing this. So. Uh, control Alt or Command Option again on the smoke folder arrow here to collapse all the folders. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to the Reveal Normal Photo layer. I'm going to grab my um, white brush here and I'm just going to draw a big thing over his face and I'm just going to lower the opacity down. So I just want just a little bit there. That'll do. Um, I'm just going to flick off the photo detail visibility. I'm just going to take a look around the design. I'm just going to brush it away in this area. Um, and I'm just going to brush it away from his, from his tie here. That'll do. Now I'm going to jump to the glowing photo outlines and do the same. I'll turn it on and off. So I might actually brush it away from his hair and around. Uh, have a look. In the bottom here, get rid of that. So that is looking pretty good. I might just lower this down a little bit more. Okay, I'm going to uh, turn the faded smoke off to take a look. I'm just going to lower the opacity down of this entire folder. Make that really subtle. And like that. I'm going to jump into the main smoke now and turn all these off and manually place these around. That. Um, Actually, don't mind that there where it is. I'm just going to duplicate it. Just going to lower the opacity down. I'm just going to brush away this bit from his nose. That um, smoke six. Kind of 
kind of like it around the sword here. Um, not so much around his neck. So I'm just going to invert this mask. And I'm going to grab my white brush. Start brushing over the sword area here. Um, I'm going to hide the mask and look at other areas. Don't mind it up here. Adds a little bit of texture. Uh, like it a little bit here. Whoops. Just going to select the mask. That looks pretty cool there. Um, maybe just a little bit up here. Like that. That's good. Uh, smoke 5. Uh, I don't mind that there. Where it is. Uh, what I might do, I'll select the mask. If, here, if I hit G to get the, my gradient tool. <coughs> excuse me. Um, and go from black to white here, I can select the mask and just draw a little line up here and that's just going to gradually fade uh, that smoke on. I'm going to duplicate this layer um, and I'm going to move this over to the sword. I am going to uh, delete this layer mask now. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to flip it horizontal. Okay, I'm going to apply a mask because I got rid of that one. I'm just going to brush this little bit away and I'm going to duplicate the layer. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to lower the opacity a bit. Alright, I'm liking the look of that. Uh, smoke 4. I'm going to push this around a bit. Uh, maybe a little bit here, but I'm just going to brush this on. So I'm invert the mask. A white brush. Just a little bit there, looks kind of cool. Smoke 3. Uh, this is another big one, so I'm going to flip it horizontal. Um, flip it horizontal again. Move it back here. Maybe that looks kind of cool. I'm just going to um, brush away this area here. It's a bit too intense. Just going to lower the opacity down a bit. Looking pretty cool. Uh, smoke 2. So what? another thing to note about, um, when the actions apply in the smoke brushes, uh, throughout the playback, if it applies a smoke brush close to the top of the canvas, um, it'll actually be chopped off. So if, if I move this down, you'll see it's got this harsh line because it's been created at the top of the canvas. So, um, so because I'm moving this down, I reckon it looks really cool around this area. I like him what it's doing to his face, but we've got this harsh line here. So I'm just going to grab my um, select the mask and just brush that away. Okay, so one there. But I'm going to duplicate this layer because I like the look of that smoke. Um, what I might do is turn up the opacity. I'm going to flip it 90 degrees and put it along the sword. Does that look any good? Uh, yeah, I'll, just, I'll get rid of that little bit there. I'm just going to duplicate it again. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. I like this area here. Uh, so I'll keep that. Uh, smoke one. Um, it's probably a bit too much. I'll move this up the top here. Just add a little bit of texture there. Okay. Let's save that. That's looking pretty pretty awesome. So I'm just going to uh, go to these, uh, these glow fold, this glow folder. I'm just going to turn it off. It's going to lower the opacity down to that fold of 50%. I'm going to go to the highlight glow, so I'll turn that on and off. That's looking alright. Uh, what else have we got to do? I'm going to turn this on and off again. Leave that on. Uh, faded off smoke, I've had a look in there. I might just try turn on, uh, turn up the opacity of the reveal photo edges. See what that looks like. I don't mind it a bit brighter at the back here because it's sort of how it sort of um, 
uh, outline the shape of his head a bit more. So I'm just going to invert invert this mask to hide it, and I'm going to brush on manually where I want that to appear up there. Just going to lower the opacity down a bit, just like that. Uh, that's looking pretty good. So I'm going to just turn on this vignette layer. Take a look at that. Keep it off. Uh, we're going to play around with the brightness controller to see if I've got the balance of everything right. Uh, exposure. There. Let's check out some of these colors. That looks pretty good. They look pretty good. I really like the default blue. Uh, this also looks good. What I sometimes like to do is uh, also create uh, another color adjustment layer above all this. So I'll just select this layer here and I'll go down here and select color balance. Okay, and from here I can further adjust the colors. Okay, set it there. So I can add a bit more red to this um, and a bit more yellow, make it look a bit more like fire. So that I can go into my, you see by default it targets the midtones. I can change that to highlights. So now it applies different colors to the highlights. So I can add uh, more yellow to the highlights. So you can see if I turn that on and off, what that's done, it's just boosted up all the colors. Um, another way to play around with the colors is to just add a hue and saturation, okay? And just drag up the saturation. So you can see that kind of has a similar effect to this um, color balance layer. All right, uh, what else? Play around with the contrast. Okay, now I'll show you how I like to sharpen the design. So I've moved a lot of layers around, so I don't want to use this sharpening layer. So what I like to do is I will select the adjustments folder. Okay, and what I need to do is merge everything I see onto one layer. So if you hold down um, Control Shift Alt E or Command Shift Option E, what that will do is merge our entire design here on one layer. So if I move that around, there it is. Okay, and I go to Filter other high pass and I will always keep this at a very low setting 201 usually 2 click OK and now I'll turn that blend mode to vivid light and it might be hard for you to see but if I turn this on and off you can see that it applies sharpening to all of our elements but it might be too strong um, so I like to lower the opacity down a bit like that that is looking cool. So I'm going to now compare this against our original. I'm just going to group all this and flick it on and off. So there's our before and there's our after. Okay, I'll work through one more example uh, just so that you're really familiar with how to, um, to adjust all the layers and create a good workflow for yourself. Alright, so I'm on to the last example now, and all I've done so far is create my brush layer. You see I have outlined my subject, so all set to go. I'll play the action. Click stop. Now, for this one, I want the smoke to fade away. Um, you see that my brush opacity is at 20%, so I need to crank that all the way up. Uh, I, need to, I want to brush over there, his feet. And... I want to start fading away from about there. Okay, so I want his top half to be um, my focal point and everything else to fade away. Okay, I'll click play and I will skip ahead to the result. Okay, there we go. So let's get into editing. I'll close the actions panel. Control Alt or Command Option on the smoke folder. Collapse all the folders. Uh, straight to the reveal normal photo. Uh, layer mask, grab my uh, white brush, need a brush over his face a little bit, and it's going to lower the opacity down. Okay, uh, I'm going to turn the photo visibility off. 
Uh, it looks pretty good with it on. I'm just going to brush away some little areas here and the shoulders. Everywhere else, I think it's pretty good. I'm going to turn off the glowing lines, see what that looks like. Not bad, I might brush it away from his hair. That. Okay, uh, what I might do is, I might try to illuminate the soccer ball a bit more. So I'm going to go into the fade off smoke. I'm going to turn up the opacity uh, for this reveal photo edges. Okay, and then I'm going to select my mask. And I'm going to grab a black brush. I'm just going to lower my brush opacity to 50%. I'm just going to start brushing away over everywhere else. Um, so I kind of, yeah, I want the ball, I'm just going to turn up the opacity a bit more. I kind of like how this foot sort of illuminated a bit as well. Um, I'm just going to brush away these other areas. There we go, looking good. Okay, uh, going to lower this lay down a bit more. Let's jump into the main smoke. Actually, what I might do first this time is let's adjust the lighting. So I'm going to go into my light one. I'm just going to change the light source to there. I'm going to go number two. I'm just going to change that that direction. Now that's manually placed this smoke. That looks good. I'm going to duplicate it. Control J. No, I'm not. I'm just going to leave it how it was. Smoke 6. Okay, I'm going to turn up the opacity. Take a look. Okay, I'm going to manually brush this on. I'm going to invert the mask. I'm going to grab my white brush. And I'm just going to brush this on there. A bit up here. And a little bit through there. Gonna hide the mask, check it out again. Maybe a bit around his hand. Maybe a bit around the back of his neck. Spoke five. Um, I like it here. I might duplicate this. I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and I'm going to just place it over the arm here. Maybe just a little bit. Kind of like that look there. I'm just going to brush away a bit. Don't want all this here and up through there. Don't want that. So I just want a little bit of smoke here. And let's keep going up. I'll move this one around. And turn up the opacity. Smoke three. Um, maybe I can have this coming out of the soccer ball. I'm just going to control T. I'm just going to scale that down. Okay, I'm just going to, I don't want this bottom bit, so I'm just going to brush that away. Okay, that's pretty cool. Got some a little bit of smoke coming out of the soccer ball. Uh, smoke two. Rotate this. Just going to lower the opacity. Leave it up here. I might just brush away this corner bit. A bit too much. Smoke one. Up there, I might duplicate it. A little tip: if you hold down uh, 
alter option and click on the layer and just drag it up or down, it creates a duplicate. Alright, I'm just going to turn off this photo glows. That's a bit too much in areas. Might just lower the opacity down. Um, highlight glows. I think it's looking pretty good. Um, okay, let's take a look at the colour. I might turn on the original photo colour for this one. Let's work with this green. So let's see what we can come up with here. The green and green looks pretty cool. Green and purple. Uh... Where's that green again? We'll go green and green. I'll try blending two together. That looks pretty cool. I might go to the background color. And I'm just gonna try change this to blue, see what we get. Don't mind that. Okay. So when I've, whenever I've played around with the layers a bit, uh, what I like to do is hit F a few times. Okay, and that'll basically put everything against um, a black background. So it gives, if there's any light passing into your room where you're working, it can kind of affect the visibility um, of things on the screen. So it's best to just get it into like a cinema mode, check everything out. Um, so I'm just looking around for any areas. I wouldn't mind a bit of um, a bit more smoke sort of coming off the back of his head here. So I might see if I can duplicate a layer up there, see what we get. Um, but everything else is looking pretty cool. All right, hit F to go back into normal mode. Control or Command Zero to fit the design to screen. Um, but I'm going to zoom back in. Okay, let's go back into the smoke. Now um, I need to identify this smoke layer here. I might try and duplicate that. So to identify that, all I do is go down the lay order here and turn the visibility on and off. It's just a quick way to find it where that smoke is. So I'm going to duplicate it. Okay, I'm just going to shift select those two layers and move them here. Um, I'm just going to brush away a bit of this detail. I'm just going to duplicate it again. Kind of like this texture that's created off the top of his shoulders here. That's looking pretty cool. Um, I'm just going to brush away a bit from here and a bit from there. Fades off a bit more. I'm just going to duplicate it again. Yeah, that's looking looking good. Um, I'll try to apply a light uh, color to these lights and see if that looks any better. Let's go with a red, maybe like a blue. What I like to do to check out the before and after, when I've applied a color, uh, I'll click OK and then I'll just hit Control Z. Um, that's just going to flip between before and after. So don't mind, don't mind that blue. That'll do. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I don't think there's really too much more we need to do. One one thing I will go through now is that inverter, uh, that inverter one. So what I'm going to do is just turn that on, and now let's just kind of create a inverter design. So first thing, I'm just going to turn off these colors uh, like that, and I'm going to just turn off the color for the lights because it's inverting them um, as well. I'm just going to turn them back to white. Okay, uh, and the background color it is inverting that. I'm just going to turn it back to back to gray. So that's what we've got. Um, I'm just going to brush a bit more into. Oh, sorry, I'm going to increase the opacity in the face area. Now I'm going to just turn off the photo detail visibility. See how that looks. 
Okay, I am going to select the main smoke folder. I'm going to change that blend mode from overlay to pass through, and that will just make the smoke appear a lot more on a white background. But I don't actually mind. What I might do, I might just keep it on overlay but duplicate the entire folder like that, and I'm just going to lower the opacity down a bit. At zero, and I'm just going to just turn up a bit. Okay, I'm going to turn on the use single color, so that's going to apply a color to our smoke. And let's go for the blues. I actually didn't mind that. Uh, like that. I might turn on the vignette layer, but when you've turned on the vignette layer, uh, you need to invert it when you've turned that inverter on. Because it's black, I need to flip that to white. So control or command I. Now that's created that um, that dark border around our design. I'm just going to lower that down a bit. Okay, the glowing photo edges. I'm just going to turn that up to see what that looks like. So you can see as I turn up the opacity, it's really starting to outline our subject a lot more. Bring it to zero. Um, so I just want a little bit. Now I'm going to turn up the reveal photo wedges a bit more. I'm just going to hide this mask. I'm going to hide the mask. I'm just going to lower the opacity again. Just like that. I'm going to play around with the brightness controller. These settings can be really sensitive, so you only need, you only need to move them just a little bit for, how to, for it to have a big effect. So I'm just moving this a tiny little bit. Okay, pretty good. I'm just going to turn some of these colors on and see if it looks any better. I might try this one, but lower the opacity right down, so it just adds a hint of color. Maybe it doesn't need it. Doesn't need it. Okay. Uh, the contrast. So look. Okay. I'm gonna brush a bit more here. So that's looking. That's looking pretty cool. All right. Um, so that's basically a couple of settings that you want to change if you want to invert all the colors and have black smoke on a white background. Um, I'm just going to flip this between the before and the after. So there we go. Um, and that is all. Um, so the key thing here is to fiddle around with all the layers, do it at a fast pace, turn them on and off. Gives you a quick preview of, you know, do you prefer the design with that layer on or off? Use the mask to control where elements appear. Duplicate layers to make them more prominent. Play around with the opacity. Um, yeah, but the key thing is to try and move away from the the default result of the action because it is randomized. It places smoke elements randomly. Okay, um, so you only need to play around for a couple of minutes and you'll create something that's much better than the default look. I guarantee it. So that's it. If you are stuck. Um, and have any questions just email me and I will help you out but if not I hope you have a lot of fun uh, using the effect thanks